Okay, well here we've got a prism from a Retina Reflex S and uh, I'll show you how to strip it down for cleaning. Now, a few words about doing anything to the prisms on the Retina Reflex cameras, particularly the Reflex S or the original Reflex, is they're extremely prone to losing the silvering on the prism if they're disturbed. And what that means is that in practice, if it's only got minor problems, you better to leave it alone because the risk of having it, it having major problems is very high indeed. In this case, this has got a quite a common problem. Um, it's got speckles of uh, mildew visible on the screen. Now they're trapped between the clear piece on the outside, which has the split image prism on it, and the ground glass behind it. So it does need to come down. There's a great danger that the silver will go off this prism, but we'll just have to live with that. So this is how I start. Always do this on a tissue. Um, that plastic surface on the bottom is extremely soft. It'll scratch. If you were to wipe at it with a uh, dry cotton bud, it would certainly scratch. It's uh, dangerous even using a wet cotton bud. Right, so I'll park these screws in a container. Now there's one other here on the back. Now that just holds that little viewfinder mask in place. That's all that's doing. That's just sitting there. That can come off. Right. That prism should lift off now. Right, the bracket's coming away. Now you can see it's it's lifted off here and here. Now we, if that happens, there's always a great danger that it'll lift that silvering off. This prism is actually pretty much shot. It's lost an awful lot of silver. So that's um, not a great loss really. I mean, it's just one of those things that's happened. Right, now there's tape around here. Now this tape is there to, to seal it. Now the reason it's sealed is to keep the dust and other rubbish out. Let's see if we can peel that off. This tape, of course, has been there since Adam was a cowboy, and as a result, when it comes off, it leaves all its adhesives behind, which then you have the joy of removing with a solvent before you can reassemble it. Let's get that prism off. This prism, I don't know whether you'll be able to see that, that is extremely nasty. That's as shadowy as hell. It's lost half its silver. Fortunately, I was able to locate a few new prisms recently. Okay. So, taking care to make sure that everything's off there. I'll peel this other plastic tape off. This serves the same function, it's to keep dust from getting into that prism assembly. That's all of that. There's spring clips hold this top condenser lens in. There's one, two or three of them. They vary from camera to camera. Uh, just a matter of how things happened, I think. So I just pop, push those in. And I can get my tweezer under the end and flip them up. 
So there's a little spring retainer. And on this camera, I think there are three. Get that in. Oh, it might be two. Let's have a look. It's hard to tell the amount of adhesive I can see from that tape sitting on there. No, it's right, it's only two. Right, so you can tip these out. Okay, so we've got a condenser that's biconvex. That's the top one, and it's symmetrical, it's the same either way. So you don't have to worry about which, which side is top. Inside here, we have this bracket, this spacer. Now, that's not symmetrical. The side with the long tab here, that goes down, that goes against the bottom condenser. If I flip this up, the other condenser will drop out. That's plano convex, flat side down that side towards the screen and in here we've got the ground glass screen there's a spacer and then there's the clear piece with the um, split image finder right in the middle of it so they should pop out with a bit of luck there's another bit of tape let's get rid of that while we're here Now, there are six screws here, 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 and one at each end. They're used to locate the clear plastic piece with a split image finder. They're also used to adjust the position of it so that the prism, the circle of the prism, fits neatly into the circle in the ground glass. Now I must find a smaller screwdriver and we'll get those screws out. You're right. Those screws are normally locked in with a touch of lacquer. Um, usually they can be turned regardless. I usually give them a turn or a half turn. To loosen them all. All right. If I give that a sharp wrap, that should all just drop out. And it did. Okay, so there's our clear plastic piece. I'm having a look at that now, blowing any dust off it. The surface looks quite good. That should clean up well. You can't afford to touch that with anything really. What I do with that is I hold it in a clip and it goes in the ultrasonic cleaner, suspended where it doesn't touch anything, and that deals with that. There's that spacer I mentioned that goes between the ground glass and that condenser lens. Pop that to one side. And here's the ground glass screen. That's just a fine ground glass on one side, plain glass on the other of course. Typically this, this needs to be cleaned too. Typically I'll just clean that with a bit of uh, glass cleaner before it all gets reassembled. So I'll pop that to one side. And here we have the housing. This is very thin, the metal of this, so it's easily distorted, so you be reasonably careful not to uh, squeeze it, otherwise it'll be, be a nuisance to get it back together. You can see all the marks from the tape. That's all dried adhesive. I normally remove that, and I normally remove that with solvent. Um, there's no pressing need to actually do that. I do it, I think, out of neatness rather than anything else. But it is dry, it's hard, it's not coming off. 
it certainly doesn't rub off on your fingers realistically you could just leave it there um, it probably would make more sense to one of the reasons I say that is cleaning it off with solvent obviously you've got to swab at it with something and normally I use a cotton bud in soaked in acetone inevitably you'll end up with threads of the cotton bud catching on those screws that we saw there which you then have to laboriously pick off with a pair of tweezers before you can reassemble it so I think we'll dispense with doing that on this particular one I'm checking the inside of it to make sure that there are no obvious loose piles of rubbish inside there and I'll probably give that a quick wipe with a cotton bud um, just to make sure there's no dust but otherwise it'll be on to the cleaning the prism as I said that's shot but fortunately I have one or two replacements which I can use right so I'll get onto that and I'll clean up the components and I'll show you how we put this thing back together okay well I've cleaned up that uh, piece of plastic and uh, so that's ready to go in I've cleaned up the other glass too while I was at it so first I'm just going to wipe out this housing just to make sure there's no dust in it I'm just using a bit of Ronson oil on the cotton bud there I'll just give that a wipe out I'm not having to go too carefully at that because it looks fairly clean it's not as though there's a lot of muck in there or anything alright that'll do us and now we can reassemble it now that plastic lens I've got that sitting there the prism is moulded into one surface and at the moment it's on the outside here and that's the way it has to drop into the holder that plastic component will show the marks from where the adjustment screw is screwed into it now on the ends there's only one screw on each end so you can see which way around that went basically so now I've just got to take that out check which way where the holes the marks are if there are any on the end there's one right there on that corner that tells me it wants to be around that way and drop that thing into the holder now I'm just checking I'll tip that upside down so I can see I'm just checking that that dropped all the way down and wasn't suspended on one of those screw heads because they just stick through slightly and we don't want that that's fine let's give that a wee puff in case there's any loose dust here's our ground glass screen now the ground glass side goes down it goes down to that face with the prism on it drop that in now there's a couple of little sort of formed spring clips on the housing at each end so you have to push it down to keep it in place now I'm having a close look at this to make sure there's no dust trapped between those two surfaces because otherwise we've got to start again right now there that was that mask that went on there that drops in we've got our two condenser lenses now it's the plano convex one that we want the flat surface goes down of course I'm just checking very carefully to make sure there's no pieces of dust on that that surface is the one that's closest to the focus screen so any dust on that would be fairly obvious any dust on the condenser above that is further away from the plane of focus and you just wouldn't notice so now we've got this spring this clip this spacer and uh, got to drop that in it's got a notch in it as, you, as it goes in that has to go into there otherwise it won't fit tidily so we'll drop that in I think I might have that in upside down. Let me whip that back here. Yeah. 
I could tell because it was rocking. Of course it shouldn't rock, it should be sit there firmly. That's better. Give a little close look at this, make sure there's absolutely no dust or anything in there. And we can drop the other condenser in. Now this is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way up it goes. Now I'm carefully puffing this to make sure there's no dust. I don't want dust appearing in here. Getting this one seated, oh that crust dropped in nicely. That's usually a nightmare because whereas you feed it and it tends to go down and get caught underneath the edge. Right, so let's start with the first of the spring clips. We've got three of these. And the only reason we've got three is that it would be loose if it only had two. Some of them have two. Some of them only have one because that's all they required. Oh, there's two. Yeah, no, there was three. Two of them are stuck together. Let's put that up the other way. It's got a bit of a curve in it. Tuck in the edges. One last one and we should be done. Get each of those four tabs seated into place. That's it. Give that a puff, make sure there's no loose dust. That part is as good as done. Now, we still got to adjust the screws that centered the plastic um, split image finder in the middle of the ground glass. We'll do that in a second. I'm just going to go away and find a new prism because this prism is absolutely shot. Back in a minute. Right, I've got a new prism from my part supply and I'm just going to clean it, make sure there's no uh, marks on there. As you can imagine with a uh, camera as old as this, which is, I mean, they're 60 years old. It's um, difficult finding parts. Get that glass surface as clean as I can get it. No smeary bits. That's good. This notch, this cutout, that's at the back. Keep that in mind. The prism should just drop down into there. And it sits in the frame. Right. Before we put the clamp, clamp down, we need to put the tape around it. Now the tape I'm using is just some cloth reinforced tape. It's called bear tape. I dare say it's identical to half a dozen other different manufacturers' tapes. Its big advantage, unlike electrical tape, PVC electrical tape stretches. And stretching is no good because it stretches when you put it on and then it relaxes at a later date and lets go. So basically what we're doing is sealing the prism or to stop the ingress of dust between the prism and the screen. This is a little bit tricky to get right. But it can be done. Make sure that prism is sitting down in place. It is. That's good. I'm just going to snip that corner so we can tuck this stuff down. And we want some pieces for the side.
use two pairs of tweezers to do this so I can sort of maneuver it into place. That's good. Again I'll snip that corner so that'll lay down flat. That's good. And then we come and trim the edge in a minute. Now you have to be very careful when you're doing this. You don't want anything sticky or dirty on that piece of uh, paper there. Otherwise it will most definitely leave a dirty mark on the bottom of the screen at the bottom which would require a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth to get rid of. Right, we've done most sides. Now the back. Originally the back had a piece that went all the way across, but it was cut away almost completely at the bottom edge which is very very hard to duplicate so I don't usually bother trying to do that so it's very difficult so all I do is I start here and come across you don't want it too high on that glass because it will come up into the viewfinder area. Even that's probably a little bit high and I might have to trim that away. Okay, so far so good anyway. Let's cut that down. That looks good. The clamp goes over the top. Now there are four screws involved in the clamp. Two of them go down into the body the bigger screws and the two smaller ones just screw to this plate. So I'm going to see if I can find the holes for those first just by punching through with my tweezers. Find one of those small black screws, drop it into place and do it up. The same for the other side. That's it. That's good. Now I'm just going to trim this excess tape off. Try not to do things like that. That's good. And we've got some more tape to go around here. We could just see a little fleck of that, that old adhesive which I said was completely solid and wouldn't move, moving there, so lucky we're covering that up. Whenever you're doing any of this work on this finder, you have to be exceedingly careful not to touch that surface because it'll mark. It'll mark really easily and you'll never get those marks out.
It covers up all of those holes. Let's blow the dust off this. That looks really good. Now, you probably can't see that, but I can see that the prism is not in the middle of the hole in the ground glass. And so I've got to move the adjustment screws to centre that thing up. And it's got to go this way. It's got to go quite a long way that way. That's better. It's fairly well centred in the other direction, so I'm just snug those screws up. Those screws were originally locked up with a bit of lacquer, nail polish, but uh, they're not really prone to coming loose, so I wouldn't um, normally bother doing anything about those. Right, that's good. That's all ready to go. That prism is ready to go back onto the body, and we'll do that shortly. Okay, well we can refit the prism now, I think. So we need to take the top off the body. Be carefully not to disturb the meter. Right. First thing we've got to do is cock the shutter halfway because what we want to do is make sure that we bring this tab here which does the frame counter well clear of the prism as we drop it in. So we'll do that. That's good. This catches on the ratchet. Check the base of that once more, make sure there's no dust on it and there is. Yep, cock the dust. And this should drop into place with a bit of luck. And it does. Alright. Screws. What have we got left in the tin of leftover bits? It's one of the screws we want, but it's only one. What's here? Two of them. That's good. So they're the broad-headed screws, and uh, one either side. So first I'm just going to punch down with my tweezers to make sure that hole through the tape is opened up. Drop that screw into place. Find a screwdriver that'll fit nicely. Run that screw up. I didn't do that quite up tight, I need a little bit of manoeuvring space. The same deal for the other side. Let's turn that around so I can get to it. I want to be cack handed today. That's good. I'll pull those up tight. At the back, we have that little mask, and that single black screw, and one, one of these screws holds that piece in place. Let's see how we go with that mask, because I thought that tape was sitting a bit high. We'll have a look and see what it looks like. So I'll pop that mask into place. That's a wee bit dusty looking. Give that a wipe. Yeah. Don't want any of that on there. That just sits in that position. I'll punch through there. That's into the bigger hole. That takes that screw. 
Now that's a slightly smaller head on that screw than we used in the previous position. And that's to give a little bit of extra clearance there so that the edge of the top cover doesn't catch on it, which otherwise it might. And then I'll punch through here with my tweezers. And that's the smaller black screw. That's the prism in place. I'll pop that lid back on there now to cover that up. Mostly because I'm particularly interested in the eyepiece of the finder. Because then I can, um, with that in place, I'll actually be able to see through the finder. And, uh, well, the focus screen will be in focus. Otherwise it won't. Let's run that up. Do the screw at the end to hold it. And then I'll go away and find a lens for it. We should have a screw for the end of that here somewhere. Which I popped down somewhere and immediately lost. That one. All right. Now look out the window against the light. That screen looks relatively well, quite clear, much better than you'd otherwise expect. And it winds and fires. I might have to be look carefully at the back and make sure there's no tape holding up the point where the shutter cocking rack slides back across the back of the prism. Otherwise this arm doesn't return into position properly. Meanwhile that looks good. I'll go away and try a lens on that and see how it looks. Right. I've tried a lens on that. It all looks quite good to me. The top cover has all been cleaned and it's ready to go back on. So now we just have to find the little bits and pieces that go on there and we'll be in business. Now first off, we have this button, which is for the meter, and it's return spring. The return spring's jammed on that one. That's unusual. I haven't really struck that before, which means that it's either not the original spring, but it obviously does the job, or it was just a change in design. Normally that's loose. So here's our top cover. I'm just checking that the finder is clean and everything else looks good. That should slide on. Now I'm just going to hold that on and I'm going to check the frame counter to make sure that it, the numbers come up centered and that it only moves one frame at a time and it does. So that's all good. That's because we've had the thing apart and we, I may have put the cocking rack back in one tooth further over from where it began its life. Screw on the top, screw on the end. That bit of loose glue off. Should be two screws here. Check that that screw was done up. It was. Open the back. That little shield covered piece goes onto the rewind and then the rewind knob itself. Drop that down, put something through the fork to stop it turning and just do it up with your fingers. That's all that's required. Everything's working there. Next, leatherette on the base plate. Now, if, we, if there'd been a problem with the finder, and the problem I have in mind is that when the image was focused 
correctly at infinity at the film plane, it didn't show correctly focused in the finder, that would mean that the distance in the optical path through the lens, through the mirror, to the ground glass was incorrect. And you can adjust that here. There's an adjuster here and a lock screw here. And basically you shift the position of the catch that holds the mirror down in the cocked position. And that effectively changes the length of the optical path so that you can fine tune that so that when the image is correctly focused at an infinity target, for example, at the film plane, which you check with a ground glass, that it also is focused correctly in the finder. Those must match. Alright, we didn't have that problem with this particular one, so it's time for the leatherettes on the base. That's my next, next task. Back in a minute. The situation with the leatherettes for the base plate is the same as it was for the other leatherettes. We want to clean it first, make sure there's no greasy deposits or anything on there. So I'll just give that a quick wipe with some Ronsonol. This is not as gummed up as the other leatherettes. It probably means it was replaced during a previous service. Whereas the other one had probably used the original leatherettes again. Right, so I'm being a bit messy again. So it's a case of do as I say, not as I do. You'll get in a mess if you do this. Make sure we've got a good even coating. Probably get a bit much on there, but we've got to get it evened out. That's better. I think we might be a bit light in a few places, so I'll just pop that there as a little re reservoir to, that I can pick it up from. That, I think, is good. Pick that up. Let's flip that over because it's as sticky as anything. And on with the leatherette. As I mentioned previously, leatherette is often shrunken back. And so, it often doesn't fit down neatly over this boss. And you need to sort of push it down into place, otherwise it ends up puck it up around the middle. <coughs> Likewise, if it's really shrunken back, it won't want to fit neatly over the, re the uh, film rewind lock button there. Our no, back release lock button there. That's good. It's sitting down into place. Just run around that, make sure it's all sitting correctly. Right, the advanced lever can go back on. Three screws. That's sitting quite nicely there. And there's the leatherette disc to go in the middle, which I saw only a minute ago, and I've since lost. No, there it is. Right. So for the leatherette disc in from the middle, we'll just put a little spot in the middle. Again, I'm being clumsy because normally I'd want to do it a bit tidier than that. Make sure it spreads out evenly, covers the edges, but you don't want to run it onto the other surface if you can avoid it. Because this particular adhesive is no problem at all. It will, it will come off the other surface. You'll be able to rub it off without any problem. Some other adhesives, if they contain too much MEK or some other unsuitable solvent, 
what will happen is that they will just neatly eat the plastic surface which is not what you want at all. So it's making sure that's centered, pressed down firmly and you might even rotate it so that the grain is square that's good rewind button time and we're just about done home and hosed here's our rewind but uh, back release cap button I should say oh look yeah, there's a couple of interesting things here let's just peel that leather head up because somewhere things weren't done correctly right we've got two little cover patches here I'll just get a spot of glue and these cover patches fit over two places on the base plate and it's to stop support the leatherette so that you don't end up with a a, dim, a dimple there now those two places one of them holds a spring that spring is involved in the cover the aperture cover and this one here that's for the adjustment for the mirror rest position that's better That adhesive, of course, hadn't set yet, so that was no problem at all. Right. Now I just have to be careful not to dump my camera down in that little patch of adhesive I've left lying around. And let's assemble this. Alright. Just two sides, two slotted sides here. The larger one is where the spring goes. This is how I do it. I put one of the screws into position. Take its return spring. And spring that into position. So it's being held there against the end of the screw. Then I carefully slide that into place. And the screw should be pushed back as the as it comes up to the case without disturbing the spring. So the spring stays there. And you can just check that yes, that does in fact return. So I can do up those two screws. And I'll check the action. And that does work nicely. I'll check that that leatherette is down snug there. Everything else is good. That's it. That is pretty much it now. Bar a little shining with a soft cloth. That job is done. Now there was a thread there I wanted to cut off with the scalpel. I better go and find the scalpel. Here we go. That's it. And that is complete. So that Retina Reflex S is now ready for service. And uh, on to the next one. Thank you.